Let's go. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. I'm your host, David Horsager. Join me as I sit down with influential leaders from around the world to discuss why leaders and organizations fail, top tactics for high performance, and how you can become an even more trusted leader. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. Today I have a special guest. He's a friend. He's been a former NFL football player. He's an amazing dad and really an amazing leader. What we say on and off the platform. He has a public space he's certainly in, but he is the chief operations officer and he's been that for the last 26 years of the Colorado Rockies, one of the most beautiful places in America to watch a ball game on a beautiful night looking up to the Colorado mountains. Uh, Welcome, Greg Fiesel. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Greg. It's it's a treat to have you on. What you know, you're just talking to these executives we have listening. The the really, it's it's trusted leaders, and that's what we're going for. But what should everybody know about Greg Fiesel? Give us three things. You know, um, make it simple. Um, you know, what you tell people, that's what you do, um, and know that uh, your word and and you know character stands for something. And, uh, you know, don't, don't lose sight of any of those. Love it. When you, uh, think about, you know, going back to the football days and can you think back to some, you know, great coaches, not great coaches, not naming anybody, but like when you saw someone that was someone I trusted and why that was someone who made a difference. Any stories come to mind as when, back when you were a player? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's tons of stories. I mean, we, we learn from uh, the good things that people do and we learn from, you know, the not so good things that people do. And um, and none of us are perfect. And, you know, we're not we're not made perfect. But no, there's um, I, I think for me, it's you know, I, I take a little bit from this person. I take a little bit from um that person. And I mean, I'll tell you a story about Dick Vermeil when I was uh, with the Eagles. Um, and my guess is he would never remember this, but I, I was a nobody. Um, I was, a, I had tried out, uh, they invited me to camp. Um, it was the year after they went to the Super Bowl, but I mean, I was really, I was about as far from a somebody as you could get. <laughs> and, um, you know, and that's back in the days when they would have, you know, a hundred people show up to, to training camps. And, uh, I was walking over from the, from the dorm to practice and he walked with me and, and talked with me and, you know, you might say, well, that, you know, what does that say about, you know, being a leader or being a trusted leader, but the fact that he would take the time out and he would walk with me versus, you know, Bill Berge or Ron Jaworski or Wilbur Montgomery. And, uh, one of the things he said to me was, you know, nothing good ever happens after midnight. And it's just a little thing, Um, but the seeds we plant in people, uh, you have no idea, you know, how they impact uh, lives. And uh, to this day, I mean, that sticks in my mind and it was just a, you know, a little walk and yeah. So yeah, little things like that pop up in my head all the time and help, help keep me going. Well, I might jump back and forth here a little bit, but jumping to to basically chief operations officer or running operations there at the the Rockies and really running a whole lot. And I've seen you do it and seen you in the role. But, you know, a couple of times we've we I, I think specifically of a time we walked the stadium and we walked. I, I It seemed like every square foot all the way around and down to where you hold people if they're getting a fight and have to go to jail or whatever. But, but you, you know, you walked with me and that brings that back to me from on the field, from players. But I just, one of the things I liked about you and and just noticed is no matter who it was, um, your owner or your uh, top player or the person, probably I would say, especially the person, um, you know, washing down the, the the pretzel stand, you noticed them and you talked to them and you said hi to them. And it seems like you know everybody. You maybe got something from from Dick and walking around the stadium and knowing everybody and saying hi to everybody. I mean, how, how has some of that really affected how you are as a leader there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it all plays, it all plays into that. And I mean, you, you know, you treat people how you want to be treated. I mean, the golden rule 
and um, you know people want uh, they want to be recognized um, and at the end of the day you know I'm in the service business and um, you know my job is not to have someone serve me but me to serve them and you know back to the Vermeil um, example is um, it really kind of blew me away that that he would take the time to, to and it was just me and him mm-hmm. so I mean and uh, there's other people walking He's walking with me. Um, so it made a huge impact on my life, and I'm sure he has no idea. One thing you and I have talked about a little bit is uh, health. And, and, you know, you got you, you, your body was probably beat up a little bit there playing, <laughs> playing in the NFL. And, and I know uh, uh, we, we also talk about how we eat. We talk about how we uh, exercise. I've been in the workout workout center there at the Rockies, or at least at spring training with you. Um, but I just I think one of the big things we talk about as leaders is is really, you know, if you're, you got to lead yourself, you got to have your own habits. Sure. And I just think of for you, even personally, what habits do you have these days that just help you live out what you believe? It can be physically funny, you know, faith, whatever, but you're, you're living a certain way there. But ha- what habits do you put in place so you're leading yourself well? Sure. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of them. My, uh, I don't know that my wife would call them all good habits, simple things like, you know, I'm an early riser and I, you know, I think it's, I think it's important to, you know, not let grass grow under your feet. And I don't expect everyone to get up at, you know, five o'clock like I do, but I've been, I've been doing it. And I think, you know, people, they miss a lot in life. They miss a lot with their families. They miss stuff with work because, um, you know, they're, they're frantic. They're pushing the snooze alarm, you know, three or four times. Um, so, I mean, that, that's an important thing to me. One of the things I learned in, in college, I, I wasn't, um, the best, um, student. I was the first one in my family, either side to, to go to college. And so that first semester, you know, I'm away from home. I never really been anywhere away from home. And, I didn't really know how to study. You know, I went to a, a small school and um, just didn't have the, the, the background. So I didn't do well my first semester. And I had one of the and talk to me and say, um, you know, you're going to you know, flunk out. And I didn't want to be the first one in my family to go to college and then flunk out of college. <laughs> um, he said, just, you know, again, back to being simple. He said, um, just sit on the front row. I'm not going to tell you anything else. Go to class, but sit on the front row. And, um, you know, is that a habit? Um, but it's important to me to uh, be at the front of the room versus uh, the back of the room. I mean, in Proverbs, quick to listen, slow to speak. I can't tell you how many times, you know, that's saved me um, in in a number of situations, athletics, uh, Rockies, uh, in my days with, uh, Coca-Cola. Yeah. So there's, uh, yeah, I, you know, you, the things you put in your body, the things you put in your mind, I, I start the day, I get up early. I start the day and, um, I just finished, um, the, the Bible in a year. Um, and I, I think it's important that when you get up in the morning, what you start putting in your mind, the same way that, you know, what you put in your mouth to eat and you, you know, you and I have talked about, you know, I eat within the first 30 minutes of getting up because, you know, you've got to put fuel in your body. So I know I kind of bounced around, but, um, you know, I think it's fundamentals. I was an offensive lineman and, you know, offensive linemen are all about, you know, fundamentals. Where do your feet go? Where are your hands? Um, do you know what the snap count is? Um, uh, you know, do you show up to practice on time? Uh, that stuff goes a long ways to, um, you know, making you uh, successful and a happy person. That's, you know, we talk about a lot here about the, the, what you input equals output, right? Right. Little things done consistently make the big difference, but it's whatever you put in, what you put in your body, what you put in your marriage, what you put in your leadership, what you put in your, you know, in everything matters and uh, into relationships, into everything. So I think absolutely it's a truth. It's the truth from, uh, Everything to business to psychology, thoughts that go in lead to desires, which lead to actions. That's the basic psychology to first law of thermodynamics. The energy you put in is the same as the energy sure. you get out. I mean, it's the same. So that's that's absolutely true. You know, 
uh, we all, we also talk a lot about you know if you're doing leadership alone, you're doing it wrong. How do you how do you surround yourself? I know you've you've had a team, you believe in team, but what right. who are you? You're kind of up at the top. You're you, you probably I'm not making assumptions here, but you know owners expect certain things, and you've got you've got. Uh, a lot of the operation side, but still there's players that expect certain things as far as sure. how the field is. You got all these people that are expecting things. How are you, you know, kind of finding a team to, to not just lead, but to, to really keep you accountable and, and also encouraged. You know, to me, it's really, I mean, it comes down again, not trying to be simple, but I'm just a dumb offensive lineman. It comes down <laughs> to a couple things is, um, at, at the beginning of everything, the worst thing is not to know. So for me, the worst thing is not to know for the people I work with. The worst thing for them is not to know. So uh, spend a lot of time, you know, face to face. I have weekly meetings with my staff uh, and it'd be no different with, you know, customers or people that, that uh, we're engaged with. Uh, you, you've got to be in front of them. And then, you know, normally when you have problems is when uh, you don't have that that constant contact or that relationship. And, um, you know, that's why, you know, I think it's you know extremely important. And uh, we've got good we've got good people here. They've been here a long time. Uh, They the institutional knowledge we have around here, we're more like a family. I mean, I have seven direct reports and five of them are longer than me. And I'm going into my 26th season. So we're truly a family. We don't always agree. Um, but, you know, we, we usually end up going in the same direction. You've been leading through a crazy pandemic last year. Uh, you know, wh- what did you learn? Uh, patience. Um, and, you know, you got to continue to be prepared. Um, you know, we're, right now we're, you know, talking about the 2021 season and uh, scheduled to start. Uh, April 1st and uh, which is, you know, right around the corner in spring training, you know, the middle of February. And, um, you know, you just kind of have to balance uh, those two things. And, you know, with this pandemic for all of us, it's, um, you know, whether it's having people here or having them work at home remotely, you know, how do you keep that all together, uh, but also keep the business running? Um, Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a challenge. I think um, everyone has done a great job here. Uh, we didn't lay off any full-time people, which, uh, you know, came down from our owner. And, yeah, just very proud of everything that the, the staff has done. And I think, you know, we're all going to come out of this. Uh, we're going we're gonna to see things different, which that's what this pandemic is. You know, it's, it's caused us all to look about, you know, how do we – how have we been operating? How are we going to operate in the future? So, you know, that's been a positive. And then, you know, coming out of this, we're, you know, I, I really think it's, you know, I'm, you know, what does 2021 look like? It's probably a transition year. In 2022, we get back to more, um, you know, where we were in 19. Mm-hmm. I did a I did a talk this morning on, you know, 15 things I learned from 2020 that I'll use forever. And one of those uh, one of those ideas was that idea of what happens when you when you're forced to take a break or forced to have change, you know, and yeah. forced to, kind of forcing yourself to have a sabbatical. What do you think? I mean, it seems like in some ways things won't be the same. What what won't change, or what what will be better or different when you get to 2024? Like because of this pandemic, do you see anything that when you think about it, you know, down the road, are, they, are there things that you're changing long, long term because of going through kind of such a transformational time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it'd be a long list to go down, you know, what's going to change forever. I think, you know, for the person looking outside at our organization, I don't know that they're going to see uh, sweeping change uh, from the outside, but uh, definitely from uh, the inside. I, I, I think, you know, we've all learned to uh, that we're not perfect and, uh, we've learned to work smarter. And, uh, you know, I, when you, when you brought up the pandemic, you know, personally, um, you know, I live South of town and, you know, right next to open space. And I had, I had a mountain bike that I haven't ridden in five years. And, um, you know, I was doing, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles a week, 
uh, because I was able to do that. And, you know, I haven't spent time with my family in the summer ever. I mean, my wife and my daughter don't know any different. And I know your schedule travel, um, you know, you've spent more nights at home than you have in I don't know, years. Two decades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think all those things apply. Yeah. What do you, what are you doing now to get better? What are you doing to keep learning, growing? What do you, what do you, what are you doing these days? You know, uh, one of the questions that Kevin sent me was, you know, you know, what book have you read lately? And I've really, um, you know, been trying to spend, you know, more time in the Bible and, uh, and just, you know, continue to pull things out. Our, our churches here for the most part have been, um, uh, other than those first couple months have been, uh, having, uh, people come back. So, um, you know, spending time at church and, uh, sharp, you know, just sharpening, uh, the sword there. And then, you know, as it relates to, um, you know, the business side, you know, spending time, um, uh, zooming like we're doing right now with my counterparts and, you know, what have they learned? You know, the same thing you're asking me, you know, what have, what have you learned um, and trying to apply those. Hey, it's Ann with the Trust Edge team here. As you know, we are passionate about helping you and your team perform at your best. And that's why David wrote his new book, Trusted Leader. This true to life parable follows the story of a CEO who uncovers the root issue threatening his organization's success. And in the back half of the book, David provides a roadmap for even how to solve those root issues. Get Trusted Leader for your team, your organization, or even just for yourself at trustedleaderbook.com. How, how much of an island are you on? Like, do you talk to, you know, the all the presidents or chief operating yeah. officers of the just all the other clubs? You, It's a pretty close-knit group. You check in. How are you doing with this? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's like little offshoots, like, you know, if we, if you're a mid market club, there's like a little cluster that, you know, we share information. Um, we bounce things off of each other and then, yeah, there's, you know, the bigger groups. Um, but I'd say we, 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 I spend more, I personally spend more time with our, you know, clubs that are like us and how are they doing things like markets? Yeah. It's, uh, there's only 30 of us, so yeah. it's, you know, it's not Our that Minnesota, big of a number. Minnesota Twins are kind of in your market, right? Yep. Same, same yep. market. So yep. good old Twins. I just uh, spoke to the, the leadership and uh, staff there recently. It was all Zoom, obviously, instead, but um, uh, fun fun time. In fact, uh, yeah, and they, they do a great job. You know, Dave St. Peter's does a great job. Yeah, it's great stuff. What about, you know, you had this transition, you're pro football, and then, you know, this time in corporate and some Coca-Cola, it seemed like you moved up leadership pretty fast there. And you tell her, you call yourself a dumb lineman, but you're kind of at the top of what anyone would want to be at in sports, running a, operations of a great organization like the Rockies. I, <laughs> we know, but we know, I know better. And I know, he, I know your real true humility too, but um, go back to that corporate world, Coca-Cola, what what was some t- learning that you, you, as a leader there you were growing you were over sales for a time what what was is there a tipping point time there that stands out as a leader as far as the opportunity to grow what happened oh yeah there was there was you know back to you know you take this from this person and that from that person and um you know i don't know why i you know i'm very operational minded and I didn't know that, you know, growing up, but when I got into Coke, it just, it, it just, it kind of all fit, you know, I, uh, for whatever reason, you know, I picked up on distribution and production and, and the numbers and, uh, you know, how things look and, you know, Coke is, it's a very operational oriented business, but it's also, um, yeah, I wouldn't call it, um, I was going to say the word entertainment, but it's not that, um, you know, everything needs to look good. So the product is faced, the product is clean. Uh, the, the, it's not expired. Um, you know, you know, where your display is in position to your competitor. Um, yeah, all that stuff has uh, really helped me. Um, and understanding the beverage business has helped me do what, you know, I do here. And, yeah. And, you know, I had I had a lot more people who worked for me there and uh, covered a, you know, 
a lot more ground. So it, it was, um, it was, a, it was a great experience. I mean, it was, you know, my degree is not in business, but my business degree was at Coca-Cola and it was a great training ground. That's great. Well, for a guy that uh, about flunked out of college, uh, <laughs> he had to get your degrees from somewhere, right? Yeah, Keep, yeah. That, it was close. That <laughs> competency period, <laughs> competency pillar. That's not not bad. What um, any when you think about it, like with your team, whether it's now Coca Cola. What rhythms do you like? Are there rhythms you said like you always? Um, have a weekly meeting, you have a daily meeting, you you try to do this. Are there rhythms that you kind of have with your team, stay connected to lead or to build trust? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, you've you've got to be you've got to be interacting with people and you've got to do it, you know, all the time. And which is the one thing that's, you know, it's been a little tough on um you know, having people not always here. So, you know, you got so many people working remotely. Um, and I think it's, it, whether it be families, now families are jammed in the houses right now, but that sense of community and uh, camaraderie, you know, whether it's in a, a clubhouse or a locker room or in an office setting, um, you know, we're with each other here, you know, we are with our families. And then, you know, to your point earlier on high expectations, um, you know, we have um, bank covenants. You know, we we make commitments to Major League Baseball. We make commitments to our sponsors. We make promises to our fans. And, you know, meeting all those expectations, um, you've got to you got to, you know, do it together. I love it. Hey, my producer in here loves baseball. I don't know if he's going to ask about baseball or not, but uh, I always give an opportunity to ask a question to each guest, and he's getting his MBA sitting right here. Uh, listen to all the amazing people. We get the opportunity to interview, but Kent, what's, what do you have? What do you have for a, ke- a question for Greg Fiesel? Yeah. So obviously the past year plus because of the pandemic and all the different things going on has been definitely a challenge to say the least, um, for a lot of people, how, how have you been able to balance like all these different expectations, all these different things? I mean, you have, obviously you're running a business that's obviously important, but like, how do you deal with all these different changes? I mean, especially with baseball, I mean, it's like the season's not happening, then the season's happening, all those different things. How do you deal with those different high kind of high stress times when, you're having to deal with all of these different scenarios and stuff. How have you been able to deal with that in a good way? Yeah. Somebody, I don't know where I, I heard it or I read it that, you know, showed a picture of a bridge and it was like five ton weight limit. And, you know, there's, you know, hundreds of tons that go over the bridge uh, each day, but, you know, at one time it can only handle five tons and, you know, we really, you know, especially this year, uh, you, you take one thing at a time and, um, yeah. And there, you do have some people who, you know, they want to go, okay, well, what happens if six months down the road? Well, we're not able to deal with that right now. So you deal with what's in front of you and, and, uh, you know, the toughest thing for a lot of people is to act. And, uh, the second toughest thing is, they don't want to do the thing they fear the most. And uh, so many times the thing to fear the most are those decisions that are right in front of us that have to be made. And then you make that decision, then you move on to the next one. And um, that, you know, that fundamental process is, is really the key to being able to sleep at night because you start, you know, putting just, I call it stacking. And we've all seen people that just, Okay, they they stack the issues and they just keep stacking. Well, you know the bridge is crushing. If you're stacking, that bridge is toast. Well, there's a there's a ton here. We got um, give a quick little lightning round here. Uh, I mean, li- listen already. Make it simple. Character. Uh, sit on the front row. Input equals output. It's always about the fundamentals, especially for linemen and leaders. Worst thing is not to know early riser and one thing at a time don't stack the issue a uh, uh, funny thing you know uh 
uh, General McChrystal and I, uh, not that I'm close to anything, but we, we were both being interviewed on this uh, panel um, kind of early in the pandemic. So I got to hear what he said, which was much more brilliant, I'm sure, than anything I said. But we were just, we were there. And one thing he did say is in crisis, you got to boil it down, not just to, to one uh, key issue, but you got to shorten the time frame, which kind of goes to your one thing at a time. He said, you know, Gone are the days, especially you think of the pandemic in April, May. Nobody knew what was going to happen, right? He said, "He said, get rid of that one year. You can still have a long term vision, but get rid of that that one term goal or one term uh, one year priority or one month." He said, "You got to pull back. What's the what's the key thing for the team this week?" Absolutely. What's the key yeah. thing today? And and um, you know, so in fact, he talked about when he had the just really tough issue. I believe it was finding um, Bin Laden. And they just couldn't get the intel right. And they could every day they're in the wrong spot. And and they're all over, you know, basically Europe and a, part of Asia and part of North Africa. And he's over, responsible for all the troops. And finally he said, we are having a call every day, every morning. 2,200 people were on that call. Every morning wow. he said, what's, is there any new intel today? Any new intel? This is our role. This is our job. What's the intel today? Anybody? Everybody's on the call. And after that call, at the end of it, he would give a 15 minute. So this is our point of attack right now. This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. Everybody right now, this, tell everybody this. And he'd boil it down to this one uh, kind of thing every day and, and one goal every day, kind of, you know, in the midst of crisis. So it's kind of like, I, I think... I think there was a lot of overwhelm over the last nine months. Like, oh, I've got all these things. And um, that kind of jumps at me. Another military idea, a friend of mine that I was talking to in the middle of the uh, uh, kind of pandemic, I said, what's working for you? And he said, well, when I went through the, the war college in the 19, uh, uh, 1980s, I learned VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And when I have times of uncertainty, we were taught to ask two questions. Ask, what can I control and what should I do first? Which basically is what you're talking about here. Just what, don't stack it. What can I control? It turns out the last seven, nine months, people that asked what they could control instead of whining about everything they couldn't control, um, they found a lot of things they could control. And yeah. so then it's boiling it down to the first thing. So um, keep sharpening yourself. Uh, Bible, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff here. Any. I got a final question for you in a moment, but any last <clears throat> resource or quote or guiding principle that you just say, boy, if I want to be a leader, this is something I live by or think about. Anything else you would want to share in our short short time together today? I don't know if it's earth shattering, but I mean, I, anything's possible. I mean, we live in a great country and, um, you know, I didn't play it down to high school football and I ended up playing in the NFL. I don't have a business degree. Um, and I've been 26 years with the Colorado Rockies. Um, and I'm considered a football guy. So, you know, don't, don't sell yourself short. I mean, really, um, are you, are you looking at the horizon and, um, I think people, they, they let themselves get bogged down and, or they're looking at, you know, what's happening in their neighbor's yard versus focusing on what they can uh, accomplish. And, um, you know, I tell people all the time, only in America could a guy like me uh, be doing what I'm doing. Only in America. That That is crazy. So I didn't, I, like, we're wrapping up, but this is what we should have led with. You didn't play a down of high school football. Oh, no. Yeah, it, it was, Dave, it was so bad that... Um, <laughs> Um, me and another kid, my senior year had the same number. So we used to stand on opposite ends of the sideline and I never went on any away trip. Um, and I mean, you at least, should I have played a lot? No, but should you at least put the kid in? Yeah, you should put the kid in. But you know, what I learned, you know, back to, you know, learning from things that don't go right is, I mean, you, you can't miss those things. You can't miss those opportunities you got a kid that's been going to practice, never missed a practice, um, you know, put them in and um, call it respect, call it the right thing, um, you know, put them in the game. You know, what's what's the big deal? Um, but, you know, it was a little tough around my parents, but, you know, it was a 
it was a humbling experience. And then, you know, you know, the rest is, you know, kind of history. I went to junior college and then went to, um, Abilene Christian, as you know, and, um, your brother played pro with, football also. Yep. Right? So, played in Minnesota for a while. Yeah. yeah you, right here. And, uh, Packers too. So we got to see him one way or the other, right? Yeah. Or was that just you at the Packers? I was at the Packers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah he was at Seattle, uh, Baltimore, uh, Minnesota and, uh, Seattle. Yeah. Well, there's a lot more wisdom in Greg Fiesel's head. We and I'm just grateful to 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 know you and to and to be better because of you. So, thanks for being friends. Last question of the time together. Uh, you know, we call the show the Trusted Leader. The new book is coming out, Trusted Leader. I'm certainly not perfect at it by any stretch. I know. I just know it's the right way to be from the research. And sure. um, uh, but if if you had one, you said here's you know if, if you're thinking of a trusted leader, tell us about one that you think of. I know you've been around many, but who's someone you trust, the leader, and why? Boy, that's a, you know it goes. I, it's tough to single out any one person because I'm more of a guy that you know takes something from this person, takes something from that person, and um, you know my dad was a great influence in my life and. Um, just his work ethic, his character, um, uh, that a word means something, uh, which that all, I mean, trust is just wrapped in that. And, you know, you, you tell somebody you're going to do something and, and you do it. And he lived, he lived his life that way. And, um, and, you know, I, I could see the examples, you know, over and over again, when, when I grew up of that's what he did. I mean, he said he was going to show up and do this. He was going to show up and do it. And if something wasn't right, he was going to say that it wasn't right. That's great. No better place to find someone to follow than in your dad. And I know you're a great one too. Hope Lynn and Zoe and everybody are, are doing well out there. And uh, that is a treat to get to hear from Greg Fiesel. Greg, thanks for being on. And thanks for Thank just you. The, the friendship. And that's the Trusted Leader Show. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Stay trusted.